Hege lies between the larger towns of Belper and Ripley. The village is in two main parts, Hege itself and Nether Hege. Hege takes its name from its position on a high edge ridge. The original inhabitants would have been engaged in farming and there are still family owned farms today. St Luke's Parish Church was originally built of wood, but was destroyed by a violent storm in June 1545. The church was rebuilt in 1661 and enlarged in 1836. Hello and a very good morning to you. It's Saturday the 23rd of October 2021 and I just thought because I've done a lot of walks in the Peak District this year, I thought I'd have a complete change of scene. And I've come back to the Amber Valley District of Derbyshire to do another walk around here, because there's some quite interesting places to see on this particular walk. So, uh, yeah, let's see how we go. Opposite the Eagle Tavern, I walked along Brook Street, and after about a third of a mile, I took a footpath on my left. Yeah. Made a friend here. Hello. Hello. I think he's a bit cheesed off. I've got no food for him. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're lovely. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh well, I better get on with my walk. <laughs> so Hege is another place in Derbyshire that I visit a lot like many towns and villages in the county. But uh, as far as Hege is concerned, it's somewhere I really pass through more than actually stop to visit. But it's a nice little village. And uh, I know a few people that live in Hege who I've worked with before now. So hello to you if you're watching this. <laughs> ah, well, it's quite sunny at the moment. They did say that it was gonna be mainly a, a cloudy day, but it should remain dry. That's the main thing, so. It is a nice bonus that the sun is out at the moment. Keeping the hedge to my right, I crossed four fields, passing an old stone bench, before bearing left to cross the next field diagonally. This walk I'm doing is actually a, a route that was already plotted for me. It was, uh, I found it on Amber Valley Borough Council's website. The Amber Valley Council have actually plotted various routeways, and this is routeway number five, which is great. So if you just want to explore the area and you've got no idea where to go, it's worth looking on Amber Valley's website because they've got lots of routeways that you can do. So yeah, but I will put a link in the description below the video so that you can see this one. So yeah, this is routeway number five. It's just under five miles. So it's fairly, fairly leisurely. And I don't think there are any real hills to climb today. Yeah, I stroll today really then. I went through a couple of wicket gates in the hedges and continued in the same direction across more fields to an embankment. On the far side of the embankment, I crossed a further field to a track, taking me into the next hamlet. You can hear a lot of traffic nearby. That's the A38, it's not far away, but I won't be walking over that way today. For now, I'm entering Upper Hartsey. Crossing the main road, I turned left and walked along the pavement. 
I did laugh just there because uh, as I was walking through that field taking a shot I could see in the distance in one of the houses there were two people stood in their window watching me they were probably thinking what's that guy doing talking to himself <laughs> I do get that a lot I'm sure it must look odd to people when they just see a person on his own talking to a camera on the end of a tripod <laughs> but I could see them clearly just stood right in their window so I just went <laughs> And the lady actually waved back, so it was nice. After about 100 yards, and just before the corner, I turned right at a footpath sign to follow a track between buildings. Past a house back there, and there were two dogs barking at me like mad. <laughs> they weren't aggressive, they didn't come across as being aggressive, but uh, dogs are always curious, I suppose, aren't they? But uh, there was a lady with them, um, and she was just sort of putting some rubbish into a wheelie bin, and they were sort of clambering at the wall there, with their heads peeping over the top of the wall, <laughs> looking at me, barking like anything. And I said to the lady, I said, what a welcome committee, I said. <laughs> ah, lovely. I do enjoy these walks when I meet some of these friendly locals, lovely. <laughs> the track ended before a house, where I bore left to take a path between the hedge to the left and fence to the right. Getting some nice views now. Just see the A38 over there. See the traffic passing through the trees. That's the dual carriageway. And just beyond it on the horizon is the town of Ripley, which is the administrative centre of Amber Valley. Continuing down the path, I crossed several fields again, before joining the lane near the former pub at Lower Hartsey. Now I'm in Lower Hartsey. And this is part of the old Cromford Canal. Not much water here though. That way, would have gone to Langley Mill, that's where the canal used to end. But I'm heading that way in the direction of Ambergate. I follow the canal towpath for about a third of a mile before reaching houses in the main part of Lower Hartsey. Crossing the lane, I took the path opposite past the terraced houses and continued straight across the fields, still following the former route of the Cromford Canal. Eventually, I reached the former canal bridge, known as Starfin Valley Bridge. It is a fine example of a stone canal bridge, typical of the ones that existed along the Cromford Canal. around here. I've actually walked around here before, so it makes a nice change. 
Very pleasant indeed. I continued straight on for nearly a third of a mile until I came to a disused railway bridge. Oh. You can hear the traffic on the A610 now. Yeah, I'm just coming into Buckland Hollow. Passing under the bridge, I turned left through the car park of the excavator pub. Well, the excavator is another pub that I've passed hundreds of times, but never been in. Yet. I must do it just to say that I've been there. Okay. Still following the filled-in route of the Cromford Canal, I passed through the short tunnel and continued along the former towpath, which runs parallel to the busy A610 for about three quarters of a mile. Walking behind the houses at Ladygrove, I crossed the entrance road to the Lockwood Group factories. Going up the track, to cross the four arched bridge. This is where I'm veering away from the old Cromford Canal now. I'm moving away from the busy A610 as well, so that'll be nice. Heading up the hill, I entered fields again, from where I got more fantastic views. Just across the valley, I could see the village of Nether Hege. see in the distance, which is where I'm heading for, probably today's highlight on this walk. I continued through the fields, heading in the direction of the windmill. Finally, the path crossed a quiet lane near the mill, as I found myself back in Hege. So I'm back in Hege, I'm back where I started the walk, and that was a very pleasant walk indeed. Somewhere totally different again, um, nothing strenuous, just, just under five miles long, so... But now that I'm back in Hege, I've saved the highlight of the walk to the very end. Hege windmill. And it's closed. Ah. <laughs> ah, that was a bit of a surprise. Well, when I was doing my research yesterday, I was looking on the Hege Windmill Society's website, and they do give the opening times as weekends and bank holidays open between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. So, coming here today to find it closed was a bit of a surprise. So I looked again, and their website does say, there is a note which I missed yesterday when I looked, it does say that, due to Covid, they've only been opening on Sundays, so that's fair enough. My own fault for not looking carefully enough, but it's no problem, I'm going to come back tomorrow. So the following day, I returned to explore the wonderful Hege Windmill. Well, it was definitely worth my while coming back this morning. 
because the windmill is open and the sails are turning. Fantastic. Providing spectacular views over the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site, Hege Windmill was lovingly restored in 2002 and looks as good as when first built in 1797. A Grade 2 listed building, it is now a major Derbyshire attraction with a TripAdvisor Certificate of Excellence Award and the only working six-sailed stone tower windmill in England. Outside the windmill, I could see several preserved artefacts which were discovered during its restoration. There are more artefacts inside which I would see in a while. Visitors can be taken on a guided tour around the mill, so I took the opportunity to enjoy a tour myself. Right, so I'm inside the windmill now, starting at the top and working my way down. And uh, this is Paul, who's been very kind to give us an absolutely brilliant tour. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, it's been really good. It's been really, really, really interesting. Oh, no, There's so much to sort of see, and you yeah. know, when you think the mill's quite sort of, yeah. it, you know, it's quite compact inside, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, yes. Uh, but yeah, it's really interesting. So, uh, quite a lot going on for saying it's 224 years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can learn how the miller controls the mill, how stone ground flour is traditionally milled, along with many tales about the life of a miller. There is so much to learn about Hege Windmill, more than I can tell here, so I would definitely recommend a tour when this wonderful Derbyshire attraction reopens next Easter. Back on the outside, I just stood in front of the mill for a while to watch the sails turning. There is a small shop on the site where you can buy your tour tickets. The shop sells huge windmill flour when available, as well as snacks, hot and cold drinks and souvenirs. I can't begin to tell you how thrilling it is for me to be here today. After all the years that I've been passing Hege Windmill, this is the very first time I've ever actually come to visit it properly. And it was a real bonus actually going inside too. That was lovely. And the volunteers here are obviously very passionate about keeping it going, which is really nice. And long may that continue. So yeah, friendly bunch of people that belong to the Hege Windmill Society. Yeah, had a, a chat with a lot of them there, so. And Paul, who was actually the guide when I went round inside, lovely guy, and thank you, Paul, for your time. Really nice. <laughs>